My camera is completely off center. Hello, everybody. This is normal now. And there I am. Also, very washed out. Um, me problems. Um, hello, uh, Wednesday. Uh, Zhao is still out. Um, you know, mom visitation. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah. Uh, still nothing new to announce. Um, still working on things. Still working at life. So slow going so far. Um, we're already a little bit late, so we're just gonna go straight into the recap. Uh, Ben. Yeah, uh, so we, after successfully completing our mission, had some downtime. Um, for Titan and Roz, that meant nose to the grindstone, let's make your plate mail. Um, and we successfully finished that. Uh, had a celebratory drink together, but Roz doesn't like drinking anymore. And Titan did find that strange, but, you know, he's not nosy beyond making sure she's medically okay. <laughs> Um, and Lilith and Audie went and extracted a uh, some essence from one of the cores that we had collected. Um, they successfully did so, but realized, hey, maybe next time let's do that away from the camp because these things explode. Hypothetically. And then Lilith went off to work on some bracers um I, I i assume magical bracers of some kind i can't remember exactly what you were working on with sorry bracers of archery ah bracers of archery there you go um and then audie stalked her crush a little bit and then also spoke with viren and did some performances um viren seems to be okay he just has undergone some changes, not dissimilar to what we've been through. Um, however, his changes seem to have left him with a new, more angsty attitude, which is also fair enough. And also uh, just your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 60 years old. The youth of today <laughs> just... Um, uh, and then uh, some Shellseer showed up to offer their thanks and gratitude for us recovering the body of their comrade. Um, and they gave us a flare gun, single-use flare gun, essentially, that would call them to help us if we are ever in need, which is always ominous from a meta perspective, but the characters don't know that that's probably foreshadowing for missions are coming soon that will be very difficult for you. But what if we need it later? <laughs> uh, and that's, that's about all I can remember. Anybody else have anything to add? Pretty succinct. Seems good to me. Okay. Well, <clears throat> after the uh, the end of three days of rest, uh, the dawn of a new day begins in the hunter's camp here in the southern parts of Saphinus. Uh, you've heard whispers uh, in the coming days that you were expecting a couple hundred new refugees, just over 200 or so from a settlement that was started by an old friend, one of the two shell seers who used to visit Greenwood, Rorkin, uh, who survived the attack and went on to establish this settlement and gather refugees and survivors. After making contact with the, uh, the League of Phantoms, uh, it was decided that they would send all non-combatants here to the hunter's camp. And since that news has arrived, originally uh, while you were away helping the Chalcier, uh, and now is becoming uh, much more obvious uh, as a few days have passed, as many people, workers, craftsmen, uh, and all factions uh, in the camp have been steadily working on and building up the hunter's camp into 
a place where a camp is perhaps no longer the correct word. It is now burgeoning on a small town uh, where stilted uh, foundations have been created, uh, f- well, uh, you know, fortified lasting structures are, are being made, walls and roofs and windows and doors are being put up. Um, and uh, it is happening rapidly uh, due to our collective effort of everybody here. Um, especially those who do not find themselves, uh, you know, uh, of the combat persuasion. Uh, and as you all have been resting, you've been able to sort of watch this steady march of progress forward, preparing for the inevitable day when these refugees would show up. Uh, and it is on this uh, wispy morning of, of the 9th that <clears throat> the portal on the far side of the camp where the way mage waits uh tears open the portal larger than normal and outward flowing dozens upon dozens of people all ready to be received by those responsible for running the camp and volunteers of white cross and other mercenaries and the refugees that are and have been preparing for all of these people and it is not a far cry For those of you that catch glances of them making their way into the camp, looks of concern, fright, and glimpses of hope here or there of these people walking into a place that they're not familiar with, leaving one location that they perhaps considered home for another. You all, as we've discussed out of character, have your missions coming up. Um, but that's going to happen at noon, so you guys have uh, at least this morning for yourselves to decide what you wish to do with this time. If there was anything. Uh, when Audie hears the ruckus of the people coming through the portal, she's definitely going to go and try and find a perch, see if she can recognize any faces. Uh, yeah, uh, not hard to do. The, uh, north of the camp, where the Emerald Bows are, uh, it, it's a hill that slopes down into where the camp has been built. So you can kind of trudge your way up the hill and watch as people come through. Um, you know, throw me a perception check. be worse that's a 14 you sit and watch for a few minutes you look at faces stature body language groups of people uh, trying to identify anything that looks familiar to you voices you know murmuring in the crowd that might strike out as somebody familiar and you don't see anybody you don't notice anything Um, after breakfast with the Bastion, mm-hmm. Ross is going to go to the White Cross Company and help them prepare for battle. Is this poor yeah. tending to the mission you have not yet uh, received? Oh. Didn't realize we hadn't received it. Yeah, Never it's mind. coming at noon. Never mind. Breakfast with the Bastion. Hang out. Um, of which the Bastion numbers are light. Many of them have gone to volunteer to help welcome and bring in the refugees, act as guides. Um, so it's light. Uh, if anything, most of them are even taking light fare and then swiftly departing. The only ones that don't go and help are the ones that are still afflicted. And even those are staying at camp and cooking uh, to provide uh, fresh meals for those coming in. And I gotta go help the rest prepare. It's only right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the large milling mass of people. Um, different races, sizes, shapes, orientations, uh, persuasions, professions of all kinds. 
and uh yeah it, it, as expected it's a lot of work it's a lot of people uh again it's nearly doubling the size of the camp in one fell swoop but studious preparation has made sure that uh there is space for them and yet more being made and yeah you you can spend the better part of the morning helping guide people to the locations you know have been prepared for families and for those with individuals uh, as you know bunks have been set up bunk houses and have been set up and there have been basically job lists that have been made and they're looking for volunteers and as always covert is doing his bit when there's uh when there's people coming looking for an opportunity to perhaps volunteer uh although given that they have come here it's not likely he's going to see many of them Anybody else? I think Lilith is just spending the morning relaxing a bit, thinking. Not quite researching with Callista and Bellathor, but kind of discussing some of the things they, you know, thought about over the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. She's tired from enchanting. Takes a lot out of you. Yeah. Uh, anything from Titan? Uh, no, I don't think anything special. He's finished his big project. I think he's willing to take his morning off and relax a bit. Okay. Reasonable. Do the rounds with Lotus. Delicious gruel. Um, yeah, which is to say, Lotus is heavily involved. Um, she was charged with helping uh, create a center uh, and asked to take responsibility for uh, many children that have been left without families, along with several of uh, several other refugees from the you know from the camp um, who have more or less been taking care of the gaggle of twenty or thirty or so odd kids um, from your camp and surrounding ones. Okay, I'm happy to spend some time with some kids. <clears throat> uh, if there's nothing else, I will move us forward to noon. Okay. Noon comes around, and the chiming bell that summons the mercenaries to the center of the camp arrives. The camp is busy, needless to say. A lot of people are adjusting and getting used to things, but like clockwork, every day, several represent uh, representatives from the different mercenary factions arrive to the center of camp. It looks like more people have turned out today. Uh, it, maybe not new, but um, more in number. Covert standing on top of his uh, his raised platform that his desk rests on, leaning against it until he sees uh, a good representation is gathered. Uh, then, as always, the uh, well kind of wave a finger in a in, in a line and slash through it, uh, destroying a rune, and his voice will boom and fill the sound of the area clearly, cleanly. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad you could join us. A lot of uh, a lot of things happening, as you all probably observed in the early parts of the morning. We have a lot of new, fresh faces here. A lot more people to take care of. Uh, that's what makes your work all the more important. Still, um, I have a few assistants passing around some uh, reports that have been written up from uh, recent intelligence brought back from other groups as of late. Uh, take a chance to read it. Digest it, consider it, uh, and you'll watch as uh, several of the younger kids that Covert has been teaching swordsmanship to are now walking around. Um, they have crimson red armbands on, and they're, they've got just stacks of paper that they're holding against themselves, and they're walking around uh, and just, like, look, holding one up for someone to take and they're just handing them out. They're eventually disseminated.
Uh, yeah, as I said, get a chance to uh, read through that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to come and inquire of them. Um, there's a new unit uh, to, to, to learn about. Uh, as many details as we have have been written up there. Uh, if you feel like you've perhaps observed something in the past that lines up with uh, something that is written there, come talk to me. We can make sure to include that information. Um, but most importantly, uh, we're going to talk a bit about uh, what our colleagues from the, um, the League of Phantoms have discovered, uh, which has led to all the changes that you're witnessing here this, uh, this early morning. Uh, in this afternoon, uh, which is all of these uh, refugees that have come from a location aptly named Hope Prevails, a settlement established by a uh, a Shao Sir, one of one of their walkers uh, that was uh, believed to be dead but survived and has managed to bring together this, these all these people here along with uh, close to a hundred uh, that have volunteered to fight and defend a choke point on the merchant's pathway to make sure that uh, automatons cannot advance westward. Um, as you can imagine, that's not an easy position to be in. Uh, they have enemies uh, on the east, uh, and we have reports of uh, bandit clans moving and pressing in from the west, along with, of course, the logistics behind food and shelter and survival. So, uh, with that being said, uh, several missions have been put up uh, silver rewards have been doubled uh, due to the importance of this to provide incentive. Uh, we are looking to probably at least recruit 60, 70 upwards, if we, if possible, to go uh, and help them in their endeavors. Uh, this is a pretty vital location, and losing it would cause whew, uh, considerable uh, difficulties for us uh, in the long term here. So... Uh, with that in mind, uh, if you check your reports, there's also a dossier of work to do uh, with inside. Um, this is the first come, first serve basis. Uh, bonuses for those that volunteer sooner rather than later. Please take that into consideration. Um, come speak to me when you have an opportunity to decide what you wish to do. Um, that's my piece. Does anybody have any questions? All right, understood. Oh, you always know where I am if you uh, need to follow up with anything. Um, like I said, give a chance to read over the information that's been given out. Uh, make sure to take care of uh, any of these new people here that are um, lost or unsure of something. Uh, you know, good deeds go rewarded in this camp, and if I hear about them, well, I'll make sure to pass along uh, ample... Ample, uh, ample reward. All right, uh, dismissed. And, uh, you know, the mercenaries chatter and mill about, many of them dispersing almost immediately. Um, but you can see there's a couple of various groups that have kind of stuck around, uh, to speak to Covert. And so, uh, I assume you all respectively wait your opportunity to, uh, speak to them. Mm-hmm. Probably have one of us just like read through the report since I assume we only got one for the group of us. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the overview of the report is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's so it talks about uh, the mission you you all returned from. Uh, details uh, of the of the uh, what has now been adopted as named the Panther unit. Um, the fight you all uh, endured along with uh, the observation about what happened with the controller at the climax of the fight. Uh, and then a, a large part of the document is talking mostly about Hope Prevails. Um, it is, it's naming a few names, uh, citing, uh, as previously mentioned, Rorkin as their leader, the one that's gathered them all together, uh, along with uh, a few others that are helping him keep uh, everything together uh, and outlining a, a great deal of uh, assets that they require, the amount of fighting people they have, support staff they have, how much food and, and water uh, they have uh, to keep them uh, settled in, talking about a uh, need for sappers and craftsmen to go to help fortify their position, uh, basically creating a small fortress in a place where there isn't one. 
Um, so there's a lot of work to be done. So um, about 10 minutes will pass and uh, you will have your opportunity. Uh, Cover will eventually kind of uh, dis disengage from one group and then make his way over. Greenies, good to see you. Happy to see you. Nice to see you too, Covers. So, uh, can I interest any of you in some work? That's why we're here, yeah. Well, do you have a preference? Bandit slaying, monster hunting, automaton smashing. We're doing a lot of collaborative work. White Cross is going, League of Phantoms are going back. Uh, we have one tyrant that has volunteered to to go oversee some demolition work. I probably want to avoid the tyrant. Oh yeah, I wasn't recommending it. Just laying out that who all is likely going to be there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Don't. Don't. Don't volunteer with the mission where the tyrant's going. Mm -mm. Well, do we the hardy know where the tyrant is going? Uh, it looks like they're probably going to be heading east, um, but probably on a solo mission. Good. But potential overlap with uh, what looks like where the League of Phantoms are going to go as well. They've been delving into uh, uh, enemy lines for you know a couple of uh, a, a week and a half now, with uh, great success actually. Good to hear. I'm sure we'd be pretty good at helping set up fortifications for Hope Prevails. And killing Pactons. Oh, okay, so you're not volunteering as laborers. Good, I would have been surprised. Bit of both. I can do both. Well, uh, honestly, do as much as you can with the time you have there. You, there's uh, no rush to return. It's basically going to be an open channel for a while. I think I know where you're about the bandits. What about the bandits? Uh, Vanya, you should show and hear about him. Right, the uh, about killing him. yeah, the dwarven gunsmith. Right. Do we know which uh, groups or group or groups of the bandits there are? Or good question. Uh, the initial reports, uh, have basically identified two, um, which is, uh, Cruiser's Cutthroats and the Red Blades. Um, but, uh, there's been information gathered from a couple of prisoners that, uh, implies there's going to be at least three other clans arriving. They said it was more likely to be minor, uh, some of the minor clans. The two remaining major ones are likely to be hanging back. There seems to be some sort of disagreement going on amongst them. Well, the more they disagree with each other, the better for us. Yeah, yes and no. But that's a different problem, a different day, different mission. So, it sounds like bandits? That's, a, that's your choice? Sounds like the plan to me. Alright. Uh, here's your mission, Rit. Uh, he, you know, tears off a long strip of paper with a bunch of information jotted on it and his seal uh, wax stamped on it. Uh, here you go. Hang on to it. This is mostly formality, but when you get to the other side, deliver it so they know uh, where to send you to and uh, who you need to be working with. You got it. Oh, Great. The right. last minute information we need. Um, how much bandit fighting have you done? One battle. Okay, not a lot then. Not a lot. Okay. Um, in which case the information relevant, uh, the red blades are 
ferocious and fast and fight like wild animals. They do not retreat. So if you're going to try to persuade them to not kill you, it is not going to work. I'll tell you that in advance. Treat it as if you need to kill them first. If you decide otherwise, just know I warned you and the risk you're taking. Um, the other ones, the cutthroats, uh, the exact opposite. Highly organized, military trained, uh, well-equipped, uh, fight in phalanxes with heavy armor and shields. Uh, they also have a battalion of gun users. Uh, they understand how to uh, bait, switch, pincer, pull people back into uh, ambushes and traps. So be way more considerate uh, when you face off against them. Understood. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's go get ready. All right. Good luck, Greenies. I'll see you when you get back. Well, Roz is going to go get her armor. Get ready for free battle and battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see you in a half hour. Uh, that being said, uh, anybody else? Any, any pre-mission prep? Getting all the gear, putting it on, packing everything up. Let's see. Do consider, yeah, what what it is you're bringing with you, or perhaps more easily, what you're not bringing with you. You are going to a settlement location, so if you return to it, you will have shelter and spaces, places to rest that are considered safe. Um, but your mission is going to take you outside of it, so take that into consideration, and in that you might not know how long you might be out. So, like, a two-person tent might be relevant, but it could also not be, because you have a magical item you should use. Bring the box. Fucking better. Bring the box. Use the box. I'm not sure if that threat's coming from the DM or not. Mm. It's coming from whoever's still inside the box. <laughs> <laughs> Let me out. I'm trapped. Help me. Paltrow's head. <laughs> okay, so like I said, yeah, tidy, tidy up your, tidy up your sheets. Consider everything you're taking with you. And uh, you will be moved to uh the the portal which uh there's a bit of a delay um way mage laziar while powerful uh did just maintain an extra large portal for a very long time to accommodate a couple hundred people into the camp so there's about an hour of downtime between there and there uh before they can open up another portal to send a bunch of people through uh and it is in that time you gather your things and you know Say your goodbyes and kiss your cheeks and shake hands and pat shoulders and all that fun stuff. But when it's done, and the way mage is available again, a uh, not too small group of people have gathered, uh, including but not limited to uh, the entirety of the League of Phantoms. Uh, what looks like three, uh, three entire operational uh, task forces of White Cross company members, totaling about 15, 16 in total, uh, uh, and several other mercenaries uh, from the refugee side of the camp, about 40 of them, uh, in various states of preparation, readiness, uh, and ability. Um, actually, as a fun little piece, uh, anybody that's spent time in camp at the Daisy, if you just want to roll me a, like, a charisma check, this is basically a gossip check. I know, I know, Sadly. I know Kay did one of these the other day, but, uh, this is just a follow-up. Ooh, uh, 14. 20, 20 not natural. Mm. 
Everybody loves their gossip. What sort of check was it? Charisma. Charisma. Uh, Nineteen. Nice. I was going to say, and Audie has expended hers. That's a nine. Okay. She's used up all her charisma. E. No more for her. No, no. She's just heard what she's going to hear. Fair. Um. Okay. So during that time, uh, like I said, people going in and out of the daisy, sitting down for meals, having a drink, uh, you know, rubbing elbows with the occasional person that you've uh, seen with, worked for, bought something from, traded with. Uh, you know, wash laundry aside, uh, things like that. Um, it becomes increasingly obvious that, like Viren told to Melody, that there are a couple of other people in the camp that are very much like yourselves, where after being here for a while, and after accepting work as a mercenary and coming back, they've found themselves in a position that is much more different than where they were only a couple of weeks ago. Um, and for those of you that roll over a 15, uh, you would have caught one name. Hang on, I'm just mixing up all my things. Um, and that's mostly because she's a regular at the Daisy, uh, and has, uh, been rumored to spend quite literally all of her earnings there drinking. Uh, they go by the name of Kowsing, Kowsing Tenzin. They are a forest elf. Um, bit rough around the edges, but your best friend, if you're willing to buy her a drink, usually is kind of half slung over the bar in a stupor between missions. But word around is that anyone that's ever gone out with her, you get into a scrap, she finishes it. And usually in manners people aren't prepared for, the stories are a little wild. And that it seems as if she tends to fight drunk, and therefore makes her extremely unpredictable. The other one, for those of you that roll a 20 and up, there is a dragon eye, Mareki, a uh, green scaled dragon eye with a bluish tint. Uh, that has apparently come into uh, sorceress abilities uh, and have found themselves extremely adept at manipulating the elements. Uh, they have also come into uh, a unique and somewhat unusual ability that was still not entirely accepted, which is they can apparently change their their breath weapon to create different types of uh imbibable liquids ranging from a healing potion to poisons to alcohol just just a fun little fun little tidbit for you all and is especially relevant because uh, as you all are all in the big queue to pass through the portal, uh, it looks as if uh, amongst the refugee mercenaries, there are two of them that are carrying what looks like a half uh, unconscious cowsing with a, with a bottle of wine uh, sort of stuck in her hand with a death grip. I like her. I like her a lot. She doesn't die, though. Why would you raise that death flag? Who said that? Hmm? And as before, one by one, you all make your way through the portal. And for those of you that uh, have worry about teleportation sickness, you, you, you do you. On the other side, you arrive back to familiar weather. A weather that is a sharp contrast to where you've just come from. Which was a balmy, humid 29 degrees 
dropping below freezing suddenly at a crisp minus three. On either side of you, the towering mountains of the Titan's Horn mountain range provides a huge shadow that is blocking out most light and the heavy fog cover doing the rest. There are dim torches a little around and a couple of uh, magical stone lights as well to provide illumination. And you can make out the brief outlines of uh, rapidly erected structures uh, and a bunch of people uh, that are surrounded and watching as all of you are arriving. It doesn't take you all very long to realize that where you're walking... You're not on unworked ground. You're not in gravel, rock, or grass. You've arrived directly onto the merchant's, uh, the merchant's way, onto the road itself, where it seems as if this place was built directly on it to prevent any passage through. After about half of you have gotten through is when a voice kind of cuts through the otherwise quiet atmosphere of your arrival. Mercenaries, thank you all for coming. I'm Morkin, the leader of this settlement and all the fighters that have remained here. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, a lot of enemies to fight. Uh, while you're here, consider it your home. We each uh, look out for one another, take care of one another, fight, defend, and survive with one another. Uh, if you need a location to uh, set up, uh, we have spots reserved for you in the western side of the settlement. Uh, once you have all had an opportunity to find a place to uh, drop your things, uh, feel free to come back in this direction and head towards the dim red light there. Uh, there's a slowly strobing red magical stone that seems to be st stuck on the side of a, you know, just a rock face. Uh, and come either speak to me uh, or the uh, operations manager, uh, Rona. We appreciate you all coming and volunteering your time and risking your lives for this. It's, uh, gonna be a hell of a time. And, uh, yeah, for those of you, when you kind of make your way through and work and begin speaking, um, two things are obvious. One, uh, Rorkin has grown out a mighty thick beard. Um, a lot of the copper armor that he used to wear uh, has been extraordinarily damaged, and there's mostly just pieces of it left that he's sort of strapped on his decoration over top of what is uh, a breastplate now. Uh, and quite distinctly, he, he is missing his left arm. Uh, which, to all of you who know Rorikin, uh, especially uh, those of you that were interested uh, in, in terms of just combat training, and the Shalsir always being able to provide uh, tips or advice. He was a fist fighter, so this was a considerable loss for him. Uh, once he finishes his piece, he sort of turns um, with the what looks like a an Okini, a, a merfolk, uh, at, at his side, and they turn and begin walking towards the strobing red light. Um... Roz isn't going to let him get very far before she peels off her helmet and starts, like, fast walking toward him. Clink, 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 clink. Rorkin, you little bastard. All right, who do I have to beat now? <sighs> that you, Roz? Roz will pick up speed and then, like, slide on her knees right up to him and <laughs> hug him. Sparks and everything. And, uh, yeah, he just, with his, with his one arm, will wrap around and give you a couple of twangy pats on the back. It's good to see ya. Good to see you too, Roz. Uh, and he kind of peers over your shoulder, and I see you've 
brought some friends with you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Roz is gonna peel off and gesture back to the rest. We've all gotten pretty good at this mercenary stuff, actually. And we're here to help. Hmm. Merc be damned. All right. I'm gonna be honest with you, and didn't expect all of you to come marching through. But if you chose to be here, I, I'll respect it. We're here to help. You see him sit there, he nods a few times, just like taking it all in, considering. All right. Um, well, like I said, we have a bunch of space cleared out for all the arrivals. Uh, a little bit down the road on the west side. Um, it's nothing fancy. Uh, rapidly erected stone structures, canvas, tarp, rope, etc. Uh, find some place comfortable. Uh, and when you're ready, come back. We have a uh, have plenty of work for you to do. Yes, sir. Right away. I don't suppose you have an area that's approximately 40 feet wide and 65 feet long that you're not using? <laughs> he was like turning around, walking away. Uh, that's weirdly specific. Uh, I don't... I suppose if you go f far enough west uh, where the camp begins to curve out off of the road uh, on the side of the mountain, it, there's a bit of a clearing you could probably use. Do I need to be concerned about anything no we just have our own shelter all right yeah it's fine guys we can finally use the cottage let's go get set up be ready for battle Um, yeah, you guys head west in the wake of the White Cross Company uh, squads, who took to the scenario pretty simply. Once work and finished this piece, they immediately peeled off west, and uh, as you guys arrive uh, on the further part, we can see a lot of the other groups are setting up. You walk a little bit past, you can see the White Cross Company guys have immediately erected a tent. They've even kind of taken a bit of time in those few short minutes to already sort of rearrange and re-optimize their space. Uh, you can see the you know the White Cross Company banner that's kind of already stamped into the ground as the tents uh, are being put up in uniform lines. They're uh, quickly cordoning off the area with what looks like a, a silver a silver string of some kind on posts, uh, a deterrent of some kind maybe. You guys give a couple of nods as you walk by. You know, familiar enough as you are, having come in and out of the training areas. You know, speaking speaking the band and their other superiors. You know, talking to the various people uh, uh, that are on sentry duty all the time. You've seen everybody in White Cross's face at least once. But um, as you peel all the way past, moving a little bit further than you think was originally intended. Yeah, there was an area where the road uh, dips off to the right side where it isn't just mountain. Uh, where it begins to sort of go from mountain to foothill, that there's a bit of space that's uh, gravelly and a bit rocky, but has enough uh, surface area, you think, for your purpose. All right. Who wants to do the honors? Well, you carried the box. All right, uh, the little step into the clearing, place the box down, step back. I don't rem I feel like we solidified a command word when we identified it, but I don't remember what it was. You were all told to pick one. But, but what should we say? Mm -hmm. It'd be welcome home for all I care. I feel like it needs to be something 
that we wouldn't accidentally say while we're, <laughs> you know, setting it up. Good point. No ideas? Don't say when we set it up. It's always best to have a conversation we're having. We have all sorts of strange conversations. I mean, given your proclivities, Liz, we could just call it cheese. I'm not sure I understand what you're implying. And Audie leans quite close and, like, puts her cheek next to Lilith's. Mm -hmm. Lilith bursts out laughing. Audie, I need to see you at the top of that mountain real quick. It, uh, <laughs> it echoes through the pass. Many, many eyes turn to you. I don't know, why don't we just call it the Moonshine Cottage? I mean, that works. It's not something we'd say accidentally. Most people don't know what moonshine is. It's the light that comes off the moon. What are you talking about? I mean, the Greenwood special drink. Oh, that. All right, well, set it up. It's cold out here. It's cold out here. <laughs> All right, a little fool call out Moonshine Cottage in a more firm voice. Okay. So you sit on the ground and you speak its command word. You hear the tumblers and the lock shift and twist and turn and click. There's a finite pause and snap as the buckle on the front flips up and open. And then the lid, as it, it reaches back and begins to open, you watch as all of it begins to sort of morph and shift and turn into a perspective that is sort of difficult to follow with the eye, where the wood finish on the exterior begins to grow in places. The whitewashed paneled walls begin to spread and change, and the windows grow. The smell of the chimney, which is now giving off a more distinct, delicious, fresh baked bread scent uh, sort of all rapidly expands from small one foot box to this enormous uh, 40 foot by 65 foot cottage uh, and when it kind of finishes landing in place kind of like popping into existence above the door what wasn't there suddenly an, uh, uh, a cast iron arm shoots out and from it dangles a wooden sign face that says the moon si moonshine cottage and there's a, a moon uh, reflected over the surface of a lake that's so cool I love this gonna go up and open the door you have a brief moment where you go open the door and it doesn't open. And you realize you have to command it to open. Open. Hmm? You hear a lock tumble. And uh, you turn the handle. And you swing the door open. You're greeted with a blast of warm, comforting air that has a sense of hearth fire and baked goods on it. With just a little underpining of clove. The immediate interior is a big, beautiful parlor. You can see uh, there's a large burning fireplace. Uh, not enough space to comfortably sit all five of you around it. There are armchairs on either sides of the walls. There's a, a desk and a bookshelf uh, with a chair. There's a sitting area. Um, a table, chairs, rather, uh, to the to the other side, a small dining room, 
uh, enough to comfortably seat eight. Uh, next to that is a kitchen. Uh, and you can tell that across the, the, the dining room table is a spread of various types of baked goods that are uh, just absolutely radiating warmth and deliciousness. Almost like, too good to be true. House might eat you. Kind of good looking, you know? It's a risk I'm willing to take. There are six windows. Uh, and a spiral staircase on the far side that leads up to the second floor. Feel free to uh, to explore. Well, I gotta go get the best room. Whatever one that is. Well, well he's gonna go try a baked good. Okay. Uh, Roz, as you head upstairs, uh, Lilith, you head over to the dining room table. Uh, a, a huge spread of baked goods, varying types. Uh, there's like a whole loaf of bread that is sliced, along with like a, a small tub of butter and a you know a palette knife to spread uh, an array of jams, along with a bunch of like flaky pastries that are filled with cheeses and jams. Uh, there's cinnamon rolls, uh, small little finger cakes that look like they're covered in powdered sugar, um, a couple of fried pastries that look like they're probably uh, filled with a cream or a chocolate of some sort. Lots of options. Plenty of options. For now, it's cold out. She wants some buttered bread. Mm. It sounds good. Yeah, the bread is... Light and fluffy. The crust is uh, uh, a little bit crunchy around the edge. The The butter smears onto it perfectly without disturbing it at all. Uh, and it's, it gets right to that point where it's beginning to melt, so it gets into all the crevices, but it doesn't begin running off the bread. Needless to say, it's delightful. Um... Audie, Titan? Audie is likewise Titan's certainly skeptical. interested in exploring the area. Yeah. Or the house, I should say. And the rooms. There's a room with a drain in it, he claims it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So don't think about it. Yeah, don't think about it. So it sounds like Titan's going upstairs. Uh, Melody, what about you? Uh, I think she also would have uh, kind of charged upstairs with Roz. Okay. <laughs> so Lilith goes for the food, and everyone else goes upstairs. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, three of you, one by one, make your way up the uh, spiral staircase that leads up to the second floor. Uh, it's got a lovely wood finish. Um, carpeted hallways, uh, and there are four doors here, of which there are uh, polished uh, brass placards on, but they are not currently inscribed with anything. All right, well, we got to see which one's the best. Let's pop them open. Uh, all right, who, who, who goes to open a door first? It sounded like Roz is really very desperate to okay. find the best air quotes room, so I think Roz is at least beating Titan upstairs. Sure. Uh, Roz, uh, do, you, do you pick a door in particular? Just assume, like, numbered one through four. Like, is there one that you go to more than another? No, nah, just the first one, so one. Okay. When you reach out uh, and grab onto the handle to open the door, there is a distinct moment, a feeling that forces you to pause in opening the door. And you feel somewhere in your head something that is outside imposing on you. The best way I can describe it is just a question mark. Like something is asking you an ethereal question, but you don't know what the question is. Hmm. 
fucking... I was gonna stare at that placard for a second. Was one in love? You, you will watch as in sparkling gold magic uh, in flowing cursive letters, Roswin and Lilith is etched into the placard. And check inside. When you pull open the door on the other side, uh, you see what looks to be a very interesting attempt to accommodate the living space of both Lilith and Roswin in one room. There is a distinct contrast of colors, one side being blue, the other being red, with a heavy emphasis towards charcoal grays, uh, accenting the otherwise uh, now lighter finished wood in this room. Uh, there's a large king-sized bed uh, with, uh, you know, a canopy uh, that is draped off on either side, to which, again, matches the colors to the respective sides of the room it's on. Uh, one side, there's several bookshelves. Uh, what looks like a uh, a seated uh, like vanity mirror, uh, along with a, 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 like a several rows and racks for for makeup that is all currently empty. Uh, on the other side, you can tell on the wall there are several mounted weapon uh, weapon racks, along with what looks like a, a full head to toe mannequin meant for uh, storing armor on, along with a uh, a very utilitarian. Uh, you know, sort of wardrobe closet uh, that could easily be adapted to stow weapons, armor, or just any other various sundries you need. Um, those are the specifics. You can fill in all the other various little details that you'd expect to be in here in terms of various parts of furniture and niceties that you'd like. Incredible. Rosal will head in, toss down her bag. Lament the fact that if she jumped onto the bed right now, she might hurt the mattress. <laughs> mm. Magical, magical cottage, magical bedroom. Who knows? It, She's not gonna risk it. it. It might take somebody some very enthusiastic bicycle riding to figure out how far a magical bed can go. Uh, hmm. I said what I said. You sure did. All right. One second. Um. I was going to look to the other two, grab her door, slam it, and shout to see if anyone hears her. Is the room soundproof? Uh, Titan? Melody? You don't hear uh, anything. Okay. Right. But just see her, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ross steps, steps into the room, slams, slams the door. The door yeah, and, and then okay. nothing happens. Yeah, this is... Yeah, Ross is to admit when he was teasing. was over, but hey... Oh, and he just gives a shrug to Titan, like, all right, I guess so. Let's go to another room. <laughs> Open the door back up. Did you hear anything? Not for us. Uh, what? I shouted. Did you hear me? No. No. The rooms are soundproof. Lilith! Well, is Russ going to run down the stairs and get Lilith. She's on, like, her nice. third slice of bread. Not very subtle, <laughs> is she, Dwadi? <laughs> No, I don't think so. I think she's kind of gotten over to be over that. Like, the cottage is big. It's not that big. You don't need to shout. But the rooms are soundproof. Our, our room is soundproof. And it's color-coordinated for us. I'm assuming you just tested that it was soundproof with Titan and Audi. <laughs> gonna pat Raza's shoulder <laughs> and walk past her and quietly walk upstairs into their room and shut the door <laughs> <laughs> glancing at Titan and Dottie with red cheeks Titan just gives you like a half smile have fun <laughs> she's gonna test to see if she could rock lock Roz out of her own room <laughs> the test of wills <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that. If Lilith, you close the door and turn the physical lock on that side, and if Roz, if you come upstairs behind Lilith with the door shut in your face and you want to open the door and you command it to open, 
I need you both to make contested charisma checks. Oh. Four. Fifteen. <laughs> yeah, Roz, you get the door to open. Did you just try to lock me out of my own room? I was testing things. You're gonna pay for that. And it really, uh, really did. Blue on one side, red on the other, huh? Mm-hmm. Roz is gonna step into the room, shut the door. You don't hear whatever else happens, whatever it may be. Who knows? Uh, you Audie you now have this to... power. Audie tries we to call did you here the door. with the door open. <laughs> you're gonna pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> door slam. Audie. I will say, uh, Audie goes to like call through the door, even though she knows it's probably fruitless. Just remember, we're supposed to be meeting up back in camp in, in about an hour. Oh, so, good question. Can we hear stuff outside from the inside? Nope. Like if you intend to? No, they're just fully soundproof? Mm -hmm. Which means this might be a box of pocket dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting observation. Don't put it in a bag of holding. <laughs> it's like, uh, I mean, I'm grateful it's soundproof for some reasons, but... Not ideal if one of us actually gets attacked in our room. Yeah, I'd say that. To be fair, given that we're lucky to have attacks in our cellar. <laughs> given you're the one, given you're the one that identified a titan, you do have yeah. a decent understanding that the only time someone is going to be attacked in their room is if they've already destroyed a, an exterior part of the cottage. That's fair. Otherwise, I mean, the bedrooms might have windows and stuff. They do. I don't know. They do have. Yeah. They do have windows, but they still have to just. They have to go through sixty HP worth of of cottage basically to get inside the house against uh your your all's wishes. Fair enough. And besides, still. uh, there's definitely more 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 nuance to this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When we're on mission, we have an open bedroom door rule. <laughs> no. <laughs> For safety. Uh, right. Um. For before we delve any deeper into that, uh, who wants to go open a, a room next? And also, who wants to describe their room? If you didn't catch on to the fact, the cottage is basically asking you what you want your personal space to look like, and it will accommodate it. I mean, Titan's happy to let Adi pick whatever room she wants next. Uh, she would probably go, uh, assuming there's four rooms, like... There are four rooms, and one has been occupied. Yeah, two two at the tops of the stairs, and then two more doors for the um, hallway kind of thing. Imagine that the, the staircase uh, comes up into the corner, and it uh, leads you to uh, basically a four-way intersection where there's a, a door on each wall, essentially. So you guys could all okay. open your doors all at once and stare at each other in the center of the intersection. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, then, I guess if Roz and Lilith took door one, I imagine that Audie would take door three. So it would be like catty corner. Okay. Kitty corner? In the intersection. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You uh, You reach forward, grab the handle. You feel a question mark appear in your mind. Uh, yeah, and uh, she'll she'll give the same kind of pushback. Just that's none of it. And your name will be etched into the plate in a flowing script, Melody. You open the door. Uh, what's your room look like? I imagine it would look fairly similar to her room back in Greenwood. Um, I don't think it would need to be a shared space, so she probably wouldn't have the second bed like she did when she shared the room with Tiffany. Uh huh. But uh, she would have her bed kind of set up in the corner with her little writing desk and you know, or things things around her. Um, where Tiffany's bed was, though, it's almost like it's um. 
like a dressing room space mm. kind of thing so somewhere where she could you know in in her dream that she'd be able to get ready to go perform or big three panel mirror yeah small pedestal fair mm -hmm. okay yeah little dressing curtain kind of thing mm -hmm. okay no titan Titan will go and grab his room. Yeah. Same as before. Um, Your name will be etched into the plate. You get a question. How much freedom do I have in this? Like basic furnishings? Uh yeah, I mean furnishings, um materials the room are, are made out of up to a point. Um okay. basically the exterior walls have to say what the uh what the materials of the cottage are made out of. So it can either be wood or uh, whitewash plaster. Or I suppose it doesn't have to be whitewash, but plaster. Um, but if, for instance, you wanted to have a tiled floor with a drain in the middle, that, that's probably permissible. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I, I think his room would be very, like, classic farmer log cabin type room. Mm. Um, big wooden bed um, with... Uh, uh, like heavy, uh, soft blankets that just so happen, and pillows that all just so happen to have the coloring of lotus. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he'd have a big red carpet in the middle of the room, or rug, I should say, in the middle of the room. Um, good wood, hardwood floors. Um, a a a stand by his bedside. Um, with a lamp if he's allowed mm -hmm. um, and maybe some shelves on the walls um, where he could store books if he ever gets to start collecting books again and then in the corner away from the window with some curtains around it would be a tile floor with a drain in it and a metal shelf with some drawers for him to keep some medical tools in because he still needs to use it for practical things. Preferably surfaces that would allow him to clean them easily. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you can get running water. Uh, you can get functional drains. Um, uh, Wonderful. Even your general understanding of, of, uh, of the cottage, because again, you're the one that identified it. Uh, you think you could even enforce on it if you wanted it to, to have, like, a self-cleaning tile floor. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, this, this cottage is extremely magical. Uh, you all don't understand the full breadth of its abilities, but since you spent a little time with understanding, you definitely know they can, you can probably do a lot more than the basic understandings of what you'd expect from something like this. Well, Titan will experiment with it more at another death time, mm -hmm. but for now he's very impressed with the room he's gotten, that it can just read his desires like that, and that he can even push further and get self-cleaning on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always, the more you think about like the room shape and what, what you would idealize, you kind of always get additional little question marks. And the little question marks kind of reshape spots in the room. Wonderful. My question for Titan is, would it be across the hall from Adi or across the hall from uh, Lilith and Roz? <laughs> um, probably, probably across the hall from Adi. Okay. So my brain says rooms one, three, and four are then occupied, respectively, by Roz, Lilith, Melody, and Titan. And then uh, room two will, will assumedly be left for Corona. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. Yep. Neat. Most important question of all is there a bath? Uh, you know, it's really funny. The description doesn't really mention this, but I would say that there is a bath included on the first floor. 
perfect. It's like a side room. Yeah, basic, basically. If it can provide a water and self-cleaning to Titan, it can probably give us hot water for baths. It can. Mm -hmm. Melody's nameplate absolutely has a star after her name. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you didn't think about it at first, you'd walk out there, stare mm -hmm. at it, but like, I really wish there was a star there. It would etch, mm -hmm. it, it would etch itself in. The more, the more any of you spend time doing that with, with, with your room spaces, the more you realize it is an exertion of will. If you feel very strongly about it, the cottage reacts to it. If it's just kind of like a passing fancy, you're like, oh, well, I wonder how this would look. Nothing happens. Um, which is to say, you guys can kind of play around with it as like in character as much as you want, up to a degree of like with Titan, the more detailed you try to push it to be in terms of its functionality, uh, there's going to be charisma checks involved. I like that Titan's willing to push this thing pretty far at a different time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plenty of time to explore. Um, all right, well, you, you've all had a great opportunity to explore your, your cottage chest, finally. Uh, it is cozy and comfortable. Uh, it's quite literally a home away from home. Um, with all the amenities you would need and want to, to live practically anywhere. You, I think the more you think about it, the more of a boon you realize this is uh, in terms of you can go anywhere and have a safe, comfortable living arrangement just suddenly there. Um, anything, any other time you spend doing uh, in, in, in the cottage chest? Basically, say when, uh, when, you're, when you're done inside the chest uh, and you go receive mission deeds. Based on our, our number, we have to put things in here to stay inside. Let me be real honest with you. I got to double check the item description. I believe they won't if we close mm. up the house. Let's see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Same. Baked goods. Green. Let's see. Uh, the chest immediately unlocks and grows into a cottage. The remains when you speak the action itself, which works only if the cottage is empty. When dismissed, the cottage returns to its normal chest form. If there isn't any, if there isn't enough space for the cottage, uh, the chest remains locked. So I mean, it sounds like you can use the chest as normal storage, but then it won't do its thing if you open it, which is kind of funny. Um, but we can't like leave stuff in the house. Um. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything that says you can't. Well, it won't like, be. I, I mean, again, I'm I'm not looking looking to abuse this as if it's a bag of holding, but like, just, mm. you know, creature comforts for bedrooms would it be nice. Kind of is. <laughs> mm, let's see. Any big good furniture? Uh, any big good furniture or similar object vanishes when taken outside the cottage? Yeah, we all know that one. That's the magnificent mansion rule. Uh, fates, fiends can enter cottage unless you let them. Teleportation. Wood plaster can't be tipped. Immunity to damage from non-magical weapons, including siege weapons. That's very funny. Um, we're definitely going to have a whole siege mission where you guys have to fend off an army inside the cottage. Um, <laughs> only wish bullet can repair it. Each kind of thing. I don't see anything that says you can't leave stuff in your rooms and it, and it can't stay in the chest. Yeah, and regarding it being a bag of holding, the fact that we have to make it into a house to get the items, I Correct. think negates it is the not uh, as, busted yeah, part of that. It is not as utilitarian as that. Yeah, it is a convenient yeah. means of storage, uh, but not of retrieval. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make it into a house, which is an action, and then you have to go inside, grab whatever it yeah. is. Like, go upstairs. Your room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's work. So yeah, I mean, even if that even if it was written differently, I would probably still allow that. But the way it's written, you can totally do that. So you can, yeah, for instance, all of that heavy traveling equipment that you might need but might not want to carry, you can just leave inside. Lilith is setting up the desk in her room with 
her various like writing and journals and everything. I mean, similarly, Titan puts three pretty large books on his shelf. One about dragon lore, the other two are books he got from Bandit. Mm -hmm. And it's a good start, and he's happy. And I think he'd spend about 15 minutes imposing his will on the room just to see what's what and fine-tuning it a bit before he would leave again and maybe grab some bread and head out to mingle amongst the villagers rather than just hanging out in the cottage for the full hour. Yeah, I think Lilith is a bit the same. She spends a bit of time just kind of seeing what a simple thought can do to the room. Maybe testing the limits a little bit before returning it to a normal-ish room. Mm -hmm. And then she'll head back out because they are here on a mission. Mm -hmm. Rouse Melody, anything? Drop off the supplies and eat, but nothing of significance. Yeah, just kind of get settled and then she's ready to go. There's definitely a moment where Lilith grabs like a cookie to go, takes one bite out of it, it's like hanging from her mouth, she steps outside and it vanishes. Yep. You mean it's not a piece of, you know, jelly toast? You got somewhere to be? Nah, she's not running. She's walking. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely cookie. Then. Run into Roz and fall down and be like... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I've fallen. Whose strong arms could possibly pick me up? <laughs> um, Guys, they're so subtle. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Those are jeers for mercenaries on the other side of the lane. Um, Rooms okay. are soundproof, but the house it itself isn't. Everybody heard Roz yelling. <laughs> oh, Rooms no. are soundproof. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so you guys have had a chance to look through the cottage. Um, I'll be making maps for it at some point. Uh, probably the first floor, given that the the personal room floors are going to be uh, maybe a little shape shifty uh, for a bit. Um. So, yeah. Uh, you guys are going to go back and get your mission information. Before that, we're going to take a break because it's uh, right around break time. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. And one. And we're back. Um, so, yeah, the party uh, just finished exploring the, uh, the, the cottage chest for the first time. Of which we'll work out all the finite details of um, uh, as time moves on. I will definitely be map making some some aspects of it. Um, so you all dropped off uh, some various things. Again, keep track of your inventory. I trust you all to do that. Uh, so the way you know what you have on you, what you don't. Um, after spending a little bit of time in there, I'll, I'll just give you guys a nice happy like half hour. So you guys could have played around with stuff, had your fill of baked goods, and then uh, left. Um, to go meet up uh, to receive your mission information. Uh, on the way back, again, you see a couple dozen uh, other mercenaries setting up, getting getting stuff ready. Uh, the White Cross mercs are already uh, absent of their camp, minus one sentry. Um, and as you're heading back to where the small strobing uh, red, light, uh, red light is in the distance, uh, you guys are walking along talking about the fun, interesting things of the cottage chest, observing your, your, your surroundings. And um, probably because of the, the, the heavy fog, uh, you know, vision's a little obscured. You don't notice uh, that there's somebody lying in the middle of the road. One of you gives a, a slight boot tap uh, to, to the body lying there before you realize, oh, there's somebody lying here. On a closer inspection... It is uh, none other than the aforementioned uh, Kelsey. Just there, sprawled out on this road, sleeping very loudly with a bottle of wine. You think someone should wake her? Titan kind of like rubs his jaw in memory. It's, you go ahead, Roz. 
You're doing that because she think you think that she's going to punch me. Peyton just shrugs. I've never woke her up before, but an educated guess tells me I'd rather not be the one to poke her with my foot. Yeah, all right. Well, Roz is uh, not a coward. She'll try to wake up Cal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. You uh, do you just like shaking shoulders, like a little nudge with the boot. Call out first, then kind of nudge her foot. Stay okay. away from the fists. Yeah. Uh, the initial nudge doesn't get a response at all. Um, when you go over to get a bit more of a firm shake. Uh, there is a, there's like a noise, just like, like a, uh, stop. And then there is a sudden striking out of the limb, but it is not a fist. It is a leg and you find it wrapping itself around your calf and thigh. You're suddenly sort of weighted to the ground. All right, well, after hitting the ground, Roz is going to put up her hands defensively. Just trying to make sure you were ready. Don't want to cause any trouble. Ready for what? Battle? There's, I don't hear or see a battle going on around here. What do you... What do you... What do you... You all right? Are you hearing things? I'm not. The battle's not here yet. Okay, then why are you waking me up? Just wanted to make sure that you were proper ready. Also I'm resting myself. for battle. If, if you wouldn't would have wouldn't have woken me up, I would have been more ready for the battle that you're anticipating. Or All hallucinating. Right. Alright, I apologize. I'll buy you a bottle when we get back to camp. Can't do that now. We're not in camp. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a bottle of booze around here you could buy. No, I'll buy it when we get back at camp. I'm going to resent you for this. I hope you know that. Two bottles. Hmm. All right, fine. The, uh, the iron lock on the leg lets go, and they just sort of roll over in, in their spot. Okay, we're all just gonna get up, dust off, and leave Kelsang alone. Fine, it's fine. She's ready. All right, moving on then, I assume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You uh, walk the remainder of the distance, not too far, just a minute or two down the road. You uh find the red strobing light in which uh, you approach and you see there's a, a crevice in the rock. Uh, an opening, if you will. Um, that is a little bit of a tighter squeeze uh, for someone covered in plate mail or someone of titan stature, but with a little bit of work, you can get into it. Uh, when you do, when you kind of work your way through the short tunnel, you find yourself that it opens up into a, a larger room that's uh, about a 20, 20 foot radius uh, kind of area. There's some wooden furniture that's been cobbled together and left here. There's a big table in the center with a map uh, spread across it. Uh, several different, like, various reports, and you can tell there's a bunch of, like, you know, little flag notations on it and things of that nature. Um, there are a couple of people uh, inside, uh, of which you can see uh, Rorkin, uh, Rona, the person that he referred to as the operations manager. Um, who is a merfolk, and you can tell that they have uh, these kind of bioluminescent uh, spots that run along the sides of their head and go down their neck and kind of uh, sprawl out over their arms as well. So amongst this somewhat dimly lit room, they stand out quite brightly. Um, and distinctly, uh, three individuals from the White Cross Company. Uh, you would have caught sight of a good remainder of the, uh, of the, uh, the OTFs uh, standing just opposite of where uh, this was. Mostly because they probably couldn't accommodate all of them into this space. Ah, um, Roswin, Titan, uh, Melody, Lilith. Uh, do you guys have a name I can refer to you by? I don't have to 
do that every time you walk into a room. We've been going by the greenies. Mm. We did not pick it, but we didn't correct anybody either. I fear it's too late to change it by now. Uh, I can understand both of those. I disagree with the last sentiment, but that's your choice. All right, greenies. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with the White Cross. You've been sharing a camp for a while. We are. Good. Are we familiar with these particular White Cross? Um, Just curious. So out of the three that are here, um, you can tell based off of the uh, symbols pinned to their collars that they're all three of them are sergeants, one of which is a familiar face in Riot. Titan will just kind of give Riot a little nod. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, quiet. but that being said, all the other ones, you recognize their faces, but you've never really spent any time with them. Like I said, you guys come and go out of the camp enough that you're, you recognize a White Cross Company member, uh, you know, by look at this point. Um, all right, yeah, uh, so White Cross, um, Greenies, you guys know each other. No need for uh, for the for the whole spiel. Um, let's just talk about what you're here for. Uh, and he steps up to the table. Uh, and he'll he'll gesture to all to the map. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, hope prevails is uh, smack dab in the middle of the road. As you'd expect, this is not a uh, advantageous position to defend in the fact that we did pick it when we're smack dab between two enemy uh, factions that want us dead. So what we've been doing in the meantime, uh, we've been sending out scavengers to, to go gather supplies and loot from nearby towns and villages that have been abandoned. Uh, and ample fighters, um, especially those that are good with guerrilla tactics, uh, we've been sending to the west to provide and create traps and deterrence for the bandit clans. Um, while we've been relying heavily uh, on assistance from your camp, specifically from the Phantoms, to uh, head east and uh, basically find controllers and execute them before they can really continue pushing uh, any gathered forces towards us, uh, buying time so we can continue fortifying the position to deal with what is inevitably going to be a siege. That being said, the last group of bandits that uh, we encountered we managed to capture two of them in traps. And uh, after some creative friendship making, if you will, uh, we found out that there was a large movement of them heading in this direction. Um, th there was an implication that somebody somewhere at some point had had an arrangement, or I would even dare utter the word alliance, with somebody on the other side of this mountain range where they were going to go meet up. We're unfortunately in the middle of it. Um, we've seen a large majority of red blades uh, and cutthroats. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar with the bandit factions, we have a couple of reports written up over there. Uh, some old Shalseer documents from an outpost we were able to recover uh, if you need to learn a bit more about them. Um, but there's also a couple of uh, minor, minor clans that have uh, kind of weaseled their way into some of the abandoned towns. Um, and have been just waiting for opportunities to find things to take for themselves, um, of which we've been able to observe Nightwings, uh, Silver Takers, and uh, the Iron Troop. Um, they're not very large in numbers uh, that we've been able to see so far, but they're, th they're out there kind of hiding, waiting. So uh, need to be aware of the fact that there could be additional... Uh, resistance in places you wouldn't expect it the good news is about the clans is that they're not friends by any stretch of the imagination they're more likely to start fighting amongst themselves so uh the mission that we're going to assign to you in the white cross company is to take your forces head westward um essentially find and scout locations of where some of these bandits have uh, holed up. Um, if you consider it uh, approachable, remove them from a location, how you choose to do it, uh, that's up to you. I'm not going to dictate, dictate how you're going to handle that. You're going to kill them, trap them, 
uh, push them away, brainwash them. That's all up to you. Uh, your methodology, I don't care about. Uh, the thing that we want to actually be able to identify is the larger movement of the Red Blades and Cutthroat Major Clans heading in this direction. And, if possible, hurt them enough to delay their approach any further. That is the big important part. Because we can't have the automatons knocking on one side and the bandits on the other in the same instance. We will not survive. Um, I realize I'm giving you all quite a bit of leeway here, so this is your time to ask questions if you have any of them. Uh, what kind of terrain can we expect? Well, for you greenies, you live in this area. You know it well. Rocky, mountainous, merchants' ways. We've kept clear. Uh, it's colder weather right now, uh, so you have to be a bit mindful of ice um, in certain areas. But a lot of the, uh, you know, the weather shifts pretty quickly. It'll be downpouring one day, snowing the next. But you're from Greenwood. You know what this place is like. Which is to say, a reminder, Greenwood was the town that was the last stop before going through the mountain pass. The mountain pass is where this settlement has been erected. Greenwood is maybe a day's trek west. So would this be between our first mission and Greenwood? Like along that merchant path or somewhere else? I'm sorry, repeat that question? Uh, the opposite it, direction. Is it the opposite direction? I was going to say, yeah, between our first mission and Greenwood. So, or is this so the other way? your first mission is further west. Oh, okay. So if we if we kept walking towards Greenwood from our first mission, we'd pass through here. No. No. So on a straight line, we're going to establish uh, in the west is Utgard, um, yeah. no Novergern, the Dwarven the Dwarven country, which is now the Bandit Badlands. Mm -hmm. All the way east is Azale, the Gnomish homeland, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the mountain pass, the the Titan's Horn mountain range. Then the Merchant's Pathway runs all the way from west to east. The, the Merchant's Pathway runs through the mountains. The first town that is on the west side of the mountain path is Greenwood. Mm -hmm. The interior of the mountain path is where this settlement is currently erected. Oh, I see. Okay. If you so were to keep walking west from Greenwood towards Novagurn is where you yeah. would inevitably find the sh string of villages you all visited during your first mission. Right. Versus this is east of Greenwood. Okay. This is east of Greenwood, correct. Well, other than that, do we have an idea of how long we have until they are expected to start moving in and getting a bit too close for comfort? Well, we've been kicking the crap out of their advanced scouts for about a week now. We're expecting that they're going to be show up and showing up sometime in the next five days. There's a reason why I've, uh, I'm assigning close to 30 of you to go create a distraction or diversion enough to keep them away for a while up until we can at least get some more reinforcements here I'm sure with that many numbers we can manage to do something Well, uh, 
Like I said, as I've said, you you have our support. We can offer you uh, supplies, uh, replenishment on ammunition and things of that nature. Um, otherwise, like I said, how you go about this, the cooperation between you and White Cross, that's all up to you. If at any point you run into something, you find yourself back in the settlement, you have questions, you can always come here and talk to me or Rona, and uh, we can answer anything you have. All right. Mm -hmm. There are no questions. Uh, you can go get to it. All right. We'll go do that. Uh, yeah, the White Cross sergeants kind of pass a look between one another, nod, uh, and they all turn to begin filing out. Um, Rourke, Rourke and puts up a hand. Uh, Greenies, if you would stay for just a second longer. Sure. What uh, you need? You can see he turns to look at his uh, his operations manager. Rona, and there's a look between them, and she then departs, leaving just you and Rorkin in the room. I, uh, I figured I would at least tell you about some of the things that I saw uh, on the day you all had to leave. Yeah. So, I was on the east side of the village when things got pretty bad bunch of those uh little skittering automatons you know leaping out of brush and bushes and attaching themselves to people it was ugly but luckily the old man was pretty well prepared he he had uh contingencies that taught everybody what to do so he, a lot of you got out safely which was good uh I don't know if any were, any of you were able to see, but I attempted to summon uh, reinforcements. I I brought a I brought a Chalcier dragon, um, and it was immediately obliterated out of the sky. They were prepared for a response like that, like they knew that Chalcier would be there in the village. Me too. So, at that point, I figured the best thing I could do was head towards where I knew more enemies were coming in to try to buy time for other people. So I, I went to the north. I ran into a couple of the larger automatons. Uh, fortunately, my size worked well for me. I was able to maneuver around them, pull legs out on, from underneath them, topple them, break parts, rip off limbs. Uh, and it worked for a good while. Uh, couple of people I managed to push uh, push out the rest of the way. When I got to the front half of the village, though, it was where things got a little weird. Uh, there were signs of people that were resisting and fighting. Um, but I couldn't find any bodies. Nearly every other Greenwood citizen that I was able to find proof that they were there at one point, that they were fleeing or defending themselves or their family. By the time I got there, there was n nothing left of them. Not even dust. Not like being disintegrated or turned to ash. Just like they were taken. This, uh... This concern of mine would later be proven by the fact that a couple of camps that we've raided, we've managed to find uh, a couple of people from different locations with similar stories. So if you all haven't really found all the people of Greenwood yet, there's still a chance that they're somewhere out there within a camp that we haven't found yet. We found some. What kind of day do you want to go? What temperature are you? Take me to our other camp. Good. Our base missing an arm, but he's there. So. Mm. <laughs> I can relate. Um. 
yeah, uh, by the time I got to the front of the village, uh, big burst of fire, flash of light. I'm assuming that's where Bryn Rossa was. By the time I got up there, there were dozens of those uh, larger automatons. Uh, there were a couple of militia on the wall still fighting. They managed to hold them off for a while, but there were just too many of them. I tried to basically wade my way into them, pull out those that I could. How I ended up losing my arm. Just got trampled on. Managed to weasel my way out later. When things settled, I went back. Turned over every rock, went through every home, tried to find any signs of anybody that maybe hid somewhere or uh, a wounded survivor in need of aid, but nothing. Nobody. A ghost town. No sign of uh, my partner. No sign of Fazil. No sign of uh, Old Man Ulbricht or Brenner or anybody. Whoever was there during the last stand had gone. Like I said, the good news is there's a chance that they're still out there somewhere. I just haven't found them. Okay. It's not... It's not the best news. Why do you think they're taking them? Slaves. We know that they were reinforced to work fields for a little while, but... So a lot of people to take all along the merchant's path just for slaves. No, I agree. It doesn't really make sense. If anything, it would be more efficient to use our automatons to do it. Automatons don't get tired. Right. So, I haven't seen enough to understand why yet. Actually talking to somebody on the other side has been difficult, to say the least. Yeah, the last. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just said maybe they're taking them for their skin because everybody in green with their skin. Mm, possible. Lilith? No, I was just going to say, yeah, the last gnome that we fought uh, turned into a giant blazing fire elemental thing. That the new one. Yeah, news probably hasn't made it here. I'm sure you'll get a report. We only came back from that mission a few days ago. Mm. Uh, he'll jut a thumb to one of the back tables where there's a clearly crimson stamped uh, folder. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to peruse, peruse it yet, but we've got it. There's no talking to that. Yeah, you'll want to look into those panther model things. They're pretty strong. Noted. Um, hit their cars with them, okay. Okay. I mean, we'll do what we can with what we have. We've got a bunch of people that are determined to at least not give up everything. What little they have left. So, like I said, we're going to try to do something here in this position for as long as we can until we can either get reinforcements to make it something more solidified or have to abandon it. The front line, so to speak, isn't far from here, is it? Hmm. No, well, technically speaking, the front line is actually a good distance from us. They've moved pretty far into Bellwind. Technically speaking, we're the other front line. They just haven't had much reason to push super hard in this direction, but they're preparing to. That's why we're here. It's why we're doing this. 
Kelsey are gonna join me here. They're pretty preoccupied with the battlefront right now. Between the Cerulean Coalition stopping the Armada at the uh, on sea, delivering any reinforcements, the Chalcir and the Vaulters and the fifty thousand troops that we have have all been put towards the front lines to try to halt the advance and preserve as much life as possible. We're kind of in this weird place where no one wants to either admit or commit to the fact that this is going to be a war where we're going to end up having to kill a lot of people before it comes to a close. The problem is we're losing people and they're not. But I'm sure you've all had a chance to think about how bleak this is. But we don't need to dwell on that. No. An aptly named town we've got there. It was the we idea. We haven't lost yet. Oh, and uh, here's a little spot of sunshine in all of this. Uh, like I said, when I was a, a bit better, uh, I went back with some of our scavengers to Greenwood, went through some stuff. Uh, you know, we, we needed supplies, so of course, you know, we took what we needed. But there were a couple of uh, affectations left behind. Uh, one of them, I think, is uh, important to you. Uh, I feel like you guys are the ones that should have it at least. Uh, he goes over and flips open a, a footlocker on one side of the room. Um, and you see him pull out a uh, a leather-bound journal. It's got a strap rolled around it. It's uh, gray. Um, Looks pretty old, but well loved. He just walks back to the table and he just puts it on it and pushes it towards all of you. Uh, I found this in Fazil's uh, Fazil's basement. It's his journal. I feel like uh, I feel like you all should have it. Titan immediately grabs it. Thanks, Rocky. Hmm. We also have some of his uh some of his keepsakes, some of the things he had when he was a gray guard. Armor, weapon. I don't know if you guys are interested in taking it, but I'll offer it to you if you want it. Might be. I'm surprised much stuff is left since my sister tried to steal it. Your sister did what now? Uh I'll tell you about it later, but... Well, that actually... That's interesting to know. Uh, most uh, medicinal herbs, uh, medicines, potions, uh, things from the, the good store, the tavern, uh, including Fazil's uh, uh, herb garden in his basement from the nether layer, all of it was picked clean when we went back. I just assumed other other scavengers had beat us there, but it was strange that so many other valuable things had been left behind. So curious that there was somebody with a very pointed plan in mind. Rowan took as much as she could and then fled into the woods, invisible. I haven't seen her. I gotta say oh. that's that's a weird turn of events. For everything else that happened on that day. Should we should we go consider keeping an eye out for your sister while we're while we're out here? I'd love for you to try. But if she doesn't want you to see her, you literally won't. Hmm. I don't know how many wildlings your sister has encountered, but we've got a pair of hunters that are very good at finding the un the unseen. If you did find her. I would appreciate it. Well, I can tell them to keep an eye out for anything unusual or something that might be lurking around invisibly. Um, if you have something of hers, then I could even give them a scent trail to follow. Um, everything got left behind. Well, it's also a possibility there's a field guard. Just in the barrels in the trees. 
50 miles away from Bloomy Hook yet. Could have found her. She hasn't run away. She can live in the woods as much as anybody. Hmm. I mean, to be quite honest with you, there was even a chance that she got brought in. If she didn't want to be recognized, she could have done something to hide herself. She could have been sent back to the camp you all just came from. Maybe. Oh, one last thing, though, before we get ready for our, our part of the mission. Mm hmm Remember that sword that you tried to give me right before everything? Yeah, hard to forget. Did you know it was a dead company sword? You see him sort of stop and just kind of nod. Yeah, an old training weapon from the, uh, the fallen Calzeon in Galioth. Well, Roz is going to motion down to the longsword at her side and note it is not the same sword. Mm-hmm. Don't have it anymore. Yeah, I observed that. Is there a story there? Rather, do you want to tell it or have time yeah, to? Roz, is there a story there? <laughs> There's a lot of story surrounding that, and depending on who you ask, you'll get very different details. Apparently, I was cut to literal pieces by none other than Tatiana the Tyrant herself, and somebody in the Smith and Cap now owns my own cut off leg. Which, as you can see, I still have both of mine. Mm hmm. I'm more concerned there's someone walking around with a leg. Not sure who it belongs to. The person holding it, probably. Regardless, uh, just wanted you to know this. I don't have it anymore. That's all right. <sighs> I, if anything, I I have to apologize if it got you in any in any, any harm. It was definitely not my intention. Not harm you didn't oh, no. intend to get into, at least. No, I put myself in harm's way, but it's fine. I like axes better. You would have you would have thought I would assume that, but here we are. All right, well, good to know. Yeah, that's that's all I have for you. I figured first time I've seen you all in a while, I could at least catch you up on some things I saw. It's appreciated. Uh, I mean, we can probably take Fazil's things back to camp with us when we do go back. Hmm, are they good weapons? Uh, it's a Goliath weapon. Long pole, bladed on the end. That's a whole, like I said, it's a whole kit to the uh, Salomber Royal Guard. But it is good equipment. Uh, just whether or not it fits your, your 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 needs, you know. Didn't we meet one of those in the Chaos Temple? The what? For about two minutes. Grin, grin. We went to a Chaos Temple, and weird things happened, as you might expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We turned into horses. We did. Uh, a lot has happened. I'm gathering yeah, that. She was dead. We froze it. It was like a peeling an onion with these guys. Every time they bring it up, I learn something new they went through. In the more recent years, we, we met the uh, tiebreakers. That was an adventure. The tiebreakers. Good group, then. What were they doing at your camp? Oh, they weren't. They were, uh, they were cut off for a bit. They were sent to go rescue them. Then they came back to our camp. Right. And then was... a dragon came to get them, which was a whole event in its own selves. 
Why were the tiebreakers need rescuing by people like you? I'm no offense. You guys sound like you've, you know, definitely gotten some experience under your belt, but some tiebreakers are seasoned vaulters. They are the best of the shells here. Over. How did you possibly help them? One of their members were killed in battle, and we found the body. Mm, all right. I'm not sure how much we're allowed to save, but they had a reason where they could not leave their position, and they didn't have the manpower to break out of the siege. They were pretty pinned down, and yeah. It wasn't the Tidebreakers we were saving. Just one of them had been there as part of the protection, was the commanding officer. Mm. Uh, an artifact roost then like nods gotcha yeah the, there's a bunch of sh chalcier roosts like that all over the place we get some valuable or dangerous that if if we were to end up floating around and get into someone else's hands could cause a bunch of world changing altering scenarios so it gets locked up in a bunch of people stationed there Volter gets put in charge to keep it safe Oh, yeah. real sad to hear that one of them died. Uh, who was it? It's a funny thing about that. Uh, was his name Rowan? Mm, not quite. Is that his name? I'm just looking it up. I have it somewhere. What was oh. his name? Oh, he did tell us. Did. Yeah. We definitely got told. Uh, is it Voltaire? Mm. No, that was someone else in the squad with him. And I'm also trying to confirm for you because I'm just trying to get the correct freaking notepad open. <laughs> I have a notes organizational problem that I'm still working on. Mostly, I take notes in separate notepads every single week and I don't consolidate. Well, name given here. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. Let's not grind that to a halt any harder. Sad. It's a it's a good group of people. Not really looking forward to seeing the list of those that have been killed in action since this has started. And do yourself a favor and don't look till the end. Like I said, I've been not trying to, not trying to, I'm tongue tied. Try not been thinking about it. Still can't talk. <laughs> yeah. Long road ahead of us. And ahead of you all. Well, I guess since you have it, uh, can we take a look at Fazil's things? Um,. Yeah, I, I can send you over to the item storage. It's uh, strange as it might feel to possibly make use of them. If they're as high quality as you say, and I'm sure he would have wanted us to. Yeah, like I said, if, uh, if he was going to leave them to anybody, I think he'd be happy for any of you to make use of them. Um, yeah, if you uh, just head outside, I'm sure you'll encounter Rona. Uh, just tell her to take you to the, uh, to the, uh, the quartermaster in the item storage, and she'll take you to where the armor is. Well, we appreciate it. Anyone else wants to peel back that onion some more? We could talk more about the Chaos Temple. I think we can probably save that for when we're back. We've got a job to do. All right, but it's interesting stuff. Hey, you're more than welcome to come back and talk to me about it in, in the future. But y'all do have a job to do. Robert said the way'd be open for a while, at least. 
seems like we'll be able to make our way here and back to camp as we like. Uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, uh, a lot of the mercenaries sent over here were expected to stay here for the time being, also to help us respond to any unexpected attacks or ambushes. So, like I said, for the time being, you're welcome to stay here, keep the space you've taken for yourselves. All right, let's get to work. All right. Uh, you depart from the um, the headquarters, if you will, and uh, you are Titan. Titan will hang back when everybody departs. Okay. Um, just for a little bit. Um. He'll kind of just look at significantly at Rorkin's missing arm. You've lost weight. And I still see you're funny as can be. Look, uh, you know how I feel about you guys. Coppers. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you seem to be on the front lines of this. And... This is just a theory, but it's based in some pretty sound findings, um, including a thorough talk with Rathmanus. We think we know why they're taken prisoners. We believe they're using them to make cores. Like, primordial cores? It nods slowly. The cores we take from their machines very strongly resemble primordial cores. They seem to be going through a similar process. And based on the information we got from the camps, it's not like they're using them for labor or slavery, or any other kinds of stuff. It just seems to be random. Pain and... hardship. Hmm. It's all suspicious. Like I said, it's just a theory, so I don't like sharing it, but... it's a dangerous theory. Maybe you guys should look into. Yeah, we're a lot closer to things. I'll talk to some of the people we've rescued. See what they, uh, I can pick any obser observations out of them. Um, when the phantoms come back through, I'll, uh, I'll adjust their parameters a little. Have them look into it. That is a concern, to say the least. I agree. Whatever's going on, something's not right. Ain't that how this whole thing has been? Not right? Yeah. But it gets worse the more we look at it. Yeah. Can't disagree with you there. And, uh, listen, I, I'm sorry about Bryn. Well, there's a chance she's still out there. Said, not willing to I give up not. hope on it yet. Agreed, but... I know how it feels to lose people you love. Even if they're just presumed missing, Titan kind of waves the journal. Mm hmm. Well, oh. 
Well, we got work to do. Hopefully it'll bring us a little bit closer to him. At least getting some closure. Yeah. I just thought you should know. I'll catch up with the kids. Make sure they don't run into any new chaos temples. Please do. Uh, honestly, no one should be that dumb. And hey, maybe if we got a minute, you and I could have an even fight for once. <laughs> yeah, all it took was for me to lose an arm, huh? Old age is catching up to you. <laughs> yeah. I seem to have hit my prime. I'll be seeing you, Rorky. Yeah. Tighten that's out. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, on the other side of the tunnel, all of you uh, are out there. Rona's waiting, clipboard in hand. She looks very prim and put together. Uh, you know, uh, tight fitting clothes, but then bundled warmly given the uh, the, the weather. Uh, there's various parts of uh, the merfolk um, physiology that's also covered up because it's quite sensitive to the cold. Um, but with partially glowing eyes uh, and a, a long uh, slender finger will point you to the far side where there is a different color strobe, or a green one. And that is where you can find the item storage. If you just go talk to the quartermaster, they'll be able to take you to the items that you're seeking. Thank you. And uh, you head over there. And the quartermaster is a very old dwarf. Um... His age is showing, implying that he's up past that 800-year mark uh, where elder races actually begin to age. Uh, he's got just scars from combat, burn scars from working in a forge. Uh, and the fact that this is also similarly to the, the headquarters area, partially in a, a, a crack in the side of the mountain, but this one's a bit wider to accommodate the space. Like, they've picked this out specifically for the storage and the movement of items. Um, that is even more pale than you'd expect, so much so that you kind of come to a conclusion when you sort of walk by one of the dimly lit torches that this person's practically alabaster. Um, to which he realizes this is probably uh, of the dwarves in Antkin, one of the one of the slave dwarves that the 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 nobility uh, used to run their city before it sank into the ground. Um. All right. So if you come down here, I'll take you to your stuff. I was told that uh, this is pretty important. It was waiting for its owner to come back. Are you its owners? As no one wants to answer that question. I think we're as close as it's going to get to Brimble until we find the owner who's the leader of a town. Hmm. Uh, very convincing. But, but what the commander says is what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, and, and this tunnel initially much wider than the other one. Uh, has a bunch of smaller branching off tunnels. You can tell that have been kind of mined and worked out of the side of the mountain here. Uh, and they're just, where reasonable and accessible, are just lined with racks of equipment. Uh, mundane things like rope and pickaxes, uh, crates filled with blankets, uh, water skins, general supplies people would need to be out and about or just living here in the area. Uh, down to weapons, uh, racks of weapons, uh, pieces of armor like helmets and shields, things quick and easy to grab. They're ready to get ready to fight in case you don't have time to don armor. Uh, then you get down to the further parts, uh, a little bit deeper, um, and that's where you start getting to smaller open rooms where they're like complete armories, um, where people are currently back there working and preparing things to make sure everything is ready for whenever people need it. 
you go past one of those rooms and then a smaller one where you can tell there's a couple of more piecemeal unique items uh back here on the table you can see there's a couple of things just kind of strewn about uh clearly items of uh worth and magic um a tiara made of platinum embedded with several large rubies um a piece that looks like a a, a goblet uh with a draconic claw holding the uh you know the bowl part of the of the cup um and each of its nails is a different color of the primordial dragons um, and on the far side, there's a, a, a set of plate mail trimmed in gold and silver with uh, emerald undertones. Uh, and it's got a various piece of what looks like, like owl ornamentation. Um, next to that is a set of uh, gray uh, leather armor um, that is very compact, very, very uh, utilitarian. Uh, there are very, uh, very lightly done kind of impressions in the armor that only you can only see them at a certain angle when light hits a, a particular way. Uh, and it covers pretty much every part of the individual, uh, including the eyes, because the helmet seems to have a veal over it that covers uh, the, the identity of the wearer with a shadow. Uh, you'll see this dwarf kind of, you know, hobble over uh, and just with a hand with only three fingers to sort of point at it. And this is the armor that they were quite talking about. The uh, the weapon is over here on the wall. And, um, and we'll sort of spin in his place, just sort of rotating uh, 45 degrees. And we'll point uh, uh, where the, on the wall there's a couple of clearly magical weapons um, of varying types. Uh, but specifically, we'll gesture to what is a uh, very elegant uh, glaive uh, polearm weapon, uh, where the polearm itself has a slight curve to it, uh, meeting on the one side with the bladed end, which has a, like a moon sickle shape, uh, and embedded in it um, are uh, five uh, gemstones at the, the back end of the blade, uh, one for uh, white, blue, red, green, uh, and onyx. Um, for primordial colors. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> well, take them, leave them. Let me know what you do on the way out. Right. Thank you. Mm. Does anybody want to use any of these in battle? I don't think I, I don't know if I can. Really. Well, I'm pretty sure I could use this if I wanted to. Roz, I'll go over to the glaive and pick it up. Mm. It's uh, surprisingly lighter than you than you'd expect for the, the the size of the weapon. And the armor. I might be able to use it. I want to know exactly what it does first. If anything, it might just be kind of spooky looking armor. I mean, Tite might know. He, he knew for sure better than any of us. Uh, except maybe Lilith. Did he ever tell you any stories? Not of his time as a palace guard. Or at least not in any detail. Ali's got the feeling that he wanted to move past that. Lilith will pick up the armor. I don't know if Titan's caught up to us or not. I mean, he will. Eventually, eventually. yeah. Titan will pass. He but... missed that remark that Lilith might possibly share a closer connection with Fazil than Titan's <laughs> 40 years of friendship. No, we we bought it a lot in the last you? three years. 
No, no, I was joking. Um, <laughs> Mostly realizing, oh, Titan's not with us. Well, Lilith's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, eventually Titan will catch up and probably knows about the armor and the way, to be honest. And if he doesn't, he could find out. Um, yeah, uh, it would have been talked uh, to you a bit. Um, but he never went into like great detail about specifically what it does. Um, just that it, it was standard fit for all of the Salomber Royal Court guards. Um, they trained in it, they lived in it. It was a second skin for them. Um, and of course, because of what you are, uh, you know, being an, an inventor, somebody of interest in magical persuasion, he would have talked to you about some of what they were capable of. The most interesting part of it was. When I said it, when he said it was a second skin, it was l quite a literal statement in that when it, the full set of items are combined, um, they have the ability to essentially turn them off like a switch and that they sort of dissipate into a, a mist that when you need to be combat ready, you can immediately reconjure them uh, and appear in full combat kit. shares that with them and i mean if i spend take some time i can find out as much as possible but they're useful items it's it's a good set of armor and a good weapon all right how much time do you need two minutes basically great I see no reason not to figure it out now. Identify. Yay. Um okay, so there's a there's a good bit of information here. Um so one, the Grey Guard armor is based off of the Wraith item set from um the Griffin Saddlebag. Uh it's the Wraith circlet the wraith garb and the wraith ring rebranded to be gray guard official kit um so it has three items um that all have different individual items and then have a uh ensemble item when you are tuned to all three you get an additional effect um and then similarly uh the weapon is the uh, also based off of the halberd of the peacock, but it is a glaive and it is not cursed. If you'd like to look at those and give them a gander, there's a good bit of reading, unfortunately. But, uh, needless to say, they're all pretty neat. Thankfully, we're near the end, so I don't need to read them now. It's true. Regardless, yeah, the, the abbreviated version of the Grey Guard armor is makes you really good at being hard to detect and extremely mobile. Um, which I would say there there are tiny little changes I would make to them, but it's just going to make them better, like proficiency use on the Misty Step casting. Because of course. You know, solo umbrellas underground, therefore Grey Guards are very good at fighting in the dark. Safe to say, we're taking the ball with us regardless. Absolutely. If it was just for display purposes, Titan's gonna take this stuff. Yep. Alright, pack it all up. Um, that being said, I think these are amongst things I could import, uh, and I can edit them appropriately, so I'll do that uh, and have them ready for next session. Excellent. I'm reading that halberd, and it's pretty cool, and I'll probably use it. Yay. We're just getting to the point where uh, Roz is going to become a jack-of-all-trades in terms of weapons. I'm going to all my cool toys. If at any point someone thought Roz wasn't going to become a walking arm armory, they weren't paying attention. <laughs> L literally every fighter <laughs> of all time. Yeah. 
I mean, you use what's good and you use what fits the situation. That's right. But, um, all right. So uh, you collect the armor, you collect the glaive, you have Fazil's journal, and uh, you, you head back out of the, uh, the item store, as I take it. Yes, on out of here to let the quartermaster know we're taking them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you guys are, you know, Roz, you've got the glaive uh, kind of resting on your shoulder. Everyone else is carrying a piece of the armor out. And just like you see the the quartermaster busy with stuff. Uh, you just go, hey, and he just like waves a hand at you dismissively. Like, just get out. Security and the quartermaster might ask us to pay him. I'll have to take your word for it, kid. Not a foul of either, really. What on earth were you guys doing to the quartermaster of the White Cross Company that you think <laughs> they intimidated you? Well, I think he just wanted to make sure he got his armor back, so he's just very intense about it. Ah. Well, speaking of White Cross, we should uh, go meet up with them. They're probably waiting for us. Well, time to go. Uh, time to go make Ronnie proud, huh? Plus Marcus. You uh, head west, following along the road. You see the uh, signs of the tents and the camp set up by the other mercs. And on the northern side, you can see where the, right cross, the White Cross Company mercs have set up their tent, their tents. Uh, except instead, waiting on the road now uh, are all three squads uh, with their kit prepared and ready, uh, looking exactly what they need uh, to be in terms of preparation to leave. Right, we'll uh, turn and watch you uh, watch you all as you slowly emerge from the the fog. Well, about damn time. I figured you all would be chit chatting the entire day away. All right, all right. He wanted to talk to us. He's from our home village, or he spent a lot of time there anyway. My condolences. Yeah. He was real annoying to put up with. Well, if uh, you're all ready, we are we are itching to go kill some bandits. Yes, ma'am. Lead the way. Excellent. Uh, I'm sure you'll get to know everybody along the way, but in terms of command structure, you've already met me. Hi. Uh, that's Sergeant Brownie, and that's Sergeant Doorjam, and those are their squads. That's OTF-1 and OTF-2. So I'm sure you'll make friends along the lovely trek we have to make ahead of ourselves. The sergeants give you respectful nods, and uh, you get a chance to sort of look over the initial orderly appearance of the white cross company and how that they are uniform uh but then the, the longer you look at it the, the more like eccentricities you can identify between all their various members in terms of how they like to carry themselves where equipment and otherwise have changed uh, like their tabard or their armband to be somewhere else that isn't standard uh standard issue wear well if you all are ready let's get out of here Anybody, uh, anybody good at singing? We have a good story to tell. We'll probably have a better part of a day before we get to do anything fun. Well, you have a day, yes. You feeling brave? Oh, I mean, if I can get you singing with me, I know some sea songs and some uh, some shanties and tavern songs. That you know, if they don't know them, it can't just be me singing here. A marching song, then. We got a couple of them, yeah. 
Yeah, you guys are everyone singer. Uh, we'll sing all right, but we can't promise to carry a tune. And half of them laugh. You don't need to carry a tune as long as you can carry your bikes. Well, that, Miss Melody, is something that White Cross can definitely do. Sing us out. And I'm absolutely not doing that because I can't think of a marching <laughs> song to save my life. What do you mean you can't one make one up on the spot? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually mean do it, jeez. <laughs> I was thinking today even, I was like, man, could I think of another song and adapt it? But of course, the moment I go, okay, I need to pick a song, my brain goes, you've never heard a song in your life. You don't know what music is. Mood. What is a note? <laughs> like, great, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except for like battle hymns, and uh, it doesn't seem like this would be quite uh, adaptive. I could adapt them, but yeah. It's well, all good. Scotty yeah. sings us a great marching song. Yes. We we believe you do you you do right by us. It's great. And you sing us a jaunty marching tune. And uh, as promised, White Cross participates, and a good sixty percent of them are absolutely awful. But they do it with gusto, so you can appreciate the enthusiasm. Based on the role, Titan actually carries a decent baseline. Oh, nice. Anybody else want to? Yeah, go go for it. I was gonna say I'll take my my nineteen uh, performance. I rolled a ten. All right, Mrs. Bard, calm down. Yeah. <laughs> I Don't rolled worry, a ten. Mrs. It's so Bard. low. Don't worry, Mrs. Bard. Roz is also good at everything charisma, apparently. Uh, because Roz got a twenty to sing along. Hmm. All right. Hey, notice, India. Titan <laughs> got a respectable sixteen. Oh. Lilith, are you singing? No, she's not going to ruin this song. Oh. <laughs> oh the, gr the greenies are carrying it. I suppose for funsies, it's like 15 of them. How do they do? Woo! They all rolled wow. question marks. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, I rolled it to myself. Um... There you go. I can reveal it to everybody. There, enjoy the four natural ones. A three, two fours, <laughs> a six, a five, and another six. But like, a of but right. like five of them Half do. Of them don't yeah, know what they're doing? Yeah, like five yeah. of them do really well. Three of them are just screeching. <laughs> well, clearly they're not part of the White Cross Company choir. <laughs> And on that weird note, I guess that's where we're going to end. Which is honestly for the best. I've had a bunch of doctor's appointments and stuff in the last couple of days. And I've absolutely had no free time to actually prep anything. So it's really good that we're stopping right here. And then next week, we can do a bunch of uh, village town gorilla fighting with bandits. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to fight them in Greenwood. That is a distinct possibility if you guys revisit. We'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them in the air. We will never surrender. <laughs> we'll right. fight them and we'll beat them. Beat them nice. We'll beat them. Um, disregard the fact that I accidentally closed out my browser with my webcam source, so that's why I'm not there anymore, but I'm still here. Um, yeah, great. Uh, we'll uh pick up next week. Um, anybody got any life lessons out of this session? I'm definitely not in the brain space to be snappy right now. I have to keep both your arms. <laughs> yeah, having both arms in your life will definitely make it a lot easier. So in that regard, I guess you should make good choices about keeping your arms in place. Subtlety is a virtue, Roz. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Inspiration point to you. Uh, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Make good choices, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out, chat. You're the best. Bye. 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 Bye.